Today's video, we're gonna be talking about ignition timing and how you guys at home can tune uh, your own ignition advance uh, to just get a little bit better throttle response and a bit more power out of your bike. So this will relate to anything that you're using, whether it's PowerVision, TTS, Direct Link, uh, Super Tuner, whatever. So I'm gonna give some pretty general advice over the whole topic, but we're gonna jump up here and uh, I'm gonna run you through uh, a, a particular tune I have up here just as an example to show you what we're looking at, how we're data logging it, and what we're trying to do to uh, maximize the ignition advance to get the most power out of the bike. So let's go. All right guys, before I turn the phone around and show you guys a clear view of what's going on here, just to recap what uh, ignition advance is for some, it is the number in degrees of crankshaft rotation before top dead center. So what that means is the piston at the top of the very stroke is top dead center. And these numbers here, the 20, 35, 40, whatever they are, represents uh, degrees in rotation before the piston is at top dead center. The reason we wanna advance the ignition uh, and light the fuel off before top dead center is because the combustion process takes time. So if we, if we ignite the air fuel mixture at the top of the, uh, the, the stroke, the, by the time maximum pressure happens, the piston's already down on the way back down the stroke and, and the effective pressure on top of the cylinder is ineffective because of, you know, the volume is so big there and it's just, there's just not enough pressure to force that piston down. So we wanna get that in the sweet spot. How do we find that? Well, we use the dyno, we can see the torque graph, but for those at home, obviously you're gonna do some data logging uh, and you're gonna see, you're gonna watch for knock retard and all that sort of stuff. But look, getting back to ignition timing, if we light it off too soon and the piston's coming up, by the time the combustion process reaches peak pressure, if the piston's still on the way up, it is literally like hitting the piston with a hammer on the top and that's knocking, all right? So we're getting a, a, we're just smacking the piston back down while it's on the way up. Not good. Again, too late, we fire it off too late, the piston's running away from the combustion pressure and it's just ineffective. And you can, you know, you're putting too much heat out the exhaust, it's gonna run hotter. So we want to get it in the sweet spot. How do we do that? Let's go. All right, guys, here's our timing table for the rear cylinder in particular. We have the ability to adjust front and rear cylinder independently. So in this software, we've got rear cylinder up here and front cylinder over here. So we're just looking at the rear cylinder here. We have the ability to uh, have a look at this in a 3D representation. So if we hit this button here, this will bring it up uh, as a 3D view. So we can have a look at that. Uh, we can really get a bit of a, a better idea of what the table looks like as far as um, a, a tune is concerned. So I'll just bring that there for you guys. Uh, just a quick overview of this. These low numbers here, or this low section here, is a reflection of the tune up here. These high numbers is over here. This green transition through the middle is basically this section here. So again, we have uh, engine load across the top here. So whether that's uh, map pressure or TPS, depending on the tuning setup, this one is map via RPM. So we're cruising along, sort of 30 map, 2200 RPM. We've got 34 degrees of advance there. Very light load, we wanna fire that off and, and maximize. As we roll the throttle on, we wanna pull some timing out because we're loading the engine up. So as you can see, it transitions over to here as the, as the load increases and as, as the RPM builds, it's coming down this way here. Very rapid wide open throttle runs is when it jumps over to here and then slowly makes its way up as the RPM builds. Roll on is in this section right here. This is where you're gonna find most of your throttle response. So when you just wanna roll the throttle on, you wanna feel a bit of a hit. Uh, obviously it depends on your engine displacement and setup, but this is where you're gonna feel uh, fuel efficiency and throttle response. So this section here is what you wanna be looking at. You wanna increase or decrease these values here to get the sweet spot. Now, unfortunately, if you don't have a dyno, you're gonna be doing this via the seat of your pants and you're gonna be data logging. So most of your, well, just about all of the tuning softwares out there these days have the ability to data log. So you wanna record this data, you set it up, and you go for a ride and you record the data. Now, you will be looking for, if I can open a log here, let me just pick that one. So if we open this log here, we're gonna be looking for, the, well, these are just a few channels we're looking at here, but our front and rear knock. So you can see these ones here. There's a few spikes there, there's a one, there's an event there, there's a, an event here. So what we're looking at, we've got three degrees of uh, knock on the front and one and a half on the rear. 
Now we can also look at that. We see, right, that happened at 3,300 RPM. Throttle was at 24.5%. The map pressure was 56. So probably just a gentle roll on there. We were looking at 14 to 1 there, target air fuel ratio. Uh, so you can sort of see what we're looking at there and what the actual ones were. A lot of this stuff you guys aren't going to have, uh, you won't have wide band sensors on your bike. So um, you're just going to be looking at throttle position, engine load, and spark advance to, to really dial it in. You're going to see here, it wanted to, so that three degrees means there was three degrees too much advance. So it wants to pull three degrees out. So you can then pinpoint this area and go, right, well, you can see the throttle was actually on its way up there still as the, as the RPM was still building. So that happened at 3,300 RPM. So we go back to our timing table up here and on the, that was on the front cylinder. So you remember that? So front cylinder, 3,300 RPM, which is sort of in between these two areas here. And it was at about 50 map. So it was suggesting to pull about three degrees out of this area right here. So that's what you guys are going to do. You want to pull that timing out and make sure that it's not doing it again. You want to you write it, data log it again. It does take a little bit of time when you're at home doing that uh, on the road because you won't have a dyno graph. On the dyno, we can see in this particular example, our torque curve. Now this is a result I had earlier, but um, the result, what we're looking at here is the torque curve in the red. We want to maximize that. So what we can see is if we're pulling timing out, this will get softer. If we're adding timing, this will get higher. It gets as high as it can until it starts knocking. And then we want to pull it back till it doesn't knock. And then maybe pull one or two degrees out from there just to, as, as a bit of a blanket so we know that we're pretty safe. Unfortunately, you guys aren't going to have a dyno graph to see the torque curve. You're just going to have to feel the throttle response. A lot of you guys at home, you want to feel better response. So you're going to be targeting this area here. You know, you roll on 2000, 2200, 2500 through this area right here. If you don't know enough about what you're looking at, this is why you data log it so you can see where you're cruising at. So if you're cruising along at 100 kilometers an hour all the time, you'll know your, your steady map pressure is probably 40, 35 to 40 at 2200 RPM. So you can really look at that cell. You can probably increase or decrease that cell a few degrees. And then you wanna make sure you've got a nice smooth transition. You do not want big jumps in your timing map because you just want to keep everything nice and smooth so the ECM is not looking at a huge difference. So let's just pick this number here and we'll increase it. You can see now we've got a big jump there. We want to avoid this sort of thing. We want to have a nice smooth timing map overall. Right guys, look, I hope that has helped um, some of you understand what's going on. Don't be afraid to make some adjustments. Just do a couple of degrees at a time. Just remember that the um, the knock sensors are there. They are not a they're not a, a fail safe. They're as a they're like a it's knocking on the door. It's like hey, settle down because you're going to hurt something. So uh, the ECM will pull timing out. It's showing that it's going to pull it out. So you go oh well we've obviously got too much there. We want to pull that out. Don't be afraid to make some adjustments, guys. Data log your runs. All right, when you go out for a run, data log it. Pay attention to what you're doing. Think about, okay, I'm here at cruise, and as I roll on, that's where you want to look at. So just think about what you're doing. I was cruising along, I had you know steady throttle, and then I rolled on, and you've, you're looking at what the data is showing you, and cross-reference it to the timing table, make some adjustments, load it in, go try it again. Do the, it's a time-consuming process. That's why dyno tunes take hours and hours. It is a little bit faster on a dyno because we can see in real time what's going on, so we can shut the engine off reload it really quick and go from there. It does take a bit, or just takes a lot of the, the time out of it, but yeah, it still does take a fair bit of time nonetheless. So guys, look, uh, please um, put any comments down there in the bottom. I'll try and answer them as best I can. I hope this, I've just done this one straight off the cuff today. I haven't done any planning. I've just thought you guys have been uh, at me to do this ignition one. So I hope this has helped. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.